hello hello what is up guys today is a video that i've never really done before lots of you guys requested more like fashion and styling videos lots of you asked about capsule wardrobes which i don't really do anymore but i want to talk about a little bit um and things like how i've found my style and just different stuff like that i thought perhaps seasonally or whatever it ends up being. I could chat about the outfits that I'm going into the season loving and just, yeah, make this really chatty and casual. Um, kind of inspired by B. Jones style. I feel like she has really great like chatty casual fashion content and I just wanna do this sometimes. So let me know what you guys think, but let's just go ahead and hop into some stuff that I am excited to be wearing that I've been wearing as of late, this kind of end of summer, beginning of fall transitional period. Okay. So first outfit, super casual. You know me, I feel like at this point, guys, if you're not new to this channel, I just love a good woven top back to jeans a lot of the time. My favorite jeans of all time are Levi's rib cage jeans. I did a not a whole video talking about them, but basically it might as well have been. But yeah, these are a really nice sort of like true blue um, wash that they have. Sorry that you'll be able to see my phone and Mike set up this whole app, but it's the only way to do it. I talk more about them in my denim video, so I just suggest that you go watch that. But this top is somewhat new to me. I just purchased this and it's from a shop called Hackwith. Um, I'm gonna kind of monkey around with the front tuck situation. Slide on some shoes, but this top from Hackwith, they're a local business here. They hand make everything in their studio. Um, so yeah, ethical, local, we love to see it. And I love how lightweight this fabric is. I don't mind when things are a little bit sheer. I think it's cute. And then these are the shoes I've been throwing on the most like this season. These are from Sven. Uh, which is another local store here, actually. It's not in the Twin, well, would you consider it the Twin Cities? It's in Minnesota. It's a bit of a drive for me. Um, and these are number six um, clogs. You've maybe seen like certain boutiques carry clogs like that, but yeah, love these. They're like a blushy kind of natural color. And the fact that they're just like wood and leather, um, and handmade, I don't know. It's kind of like throwing on a Birkenstock, but putting a little bit more effort into it. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this look. Style discovery is such a personal journey. I know for me, when I was in college, I mean, actually we could go back even further when I was in high school and I think, you know, even before that, even all the way back into fourth grade is when I first thought to myself I wanted to be a fashion designer. But I would say my style really first like began to evolve into something unique to me when I would, well, unique to me, <laughs> but unique to the person I would become um, in high school. That's when I first started getting into thrifting and vintage. I watched a lot of clothes encounters on YouTube, a lot of the fashion citizen. Most of my wardrobe was thrifted when I was in high school, although I still definitely shopped a lot of fast fashion at that time just because that's like the first time in my life when I had a job on my own. My first job ever was at Best Buy. Fun fact, I'm sure some of you who've been following for a long time knew that. But once I got into college and realized that sustainability was a huge issue within the fashion industry, that's when I did Project 333, which I feel like some of you guys are probably maybe subscribed to me for that reason or from that era. Seasonally, I would only wear 33 items out of my wardrobe. That was actually a very, very helpful time in my life. And although I don't do that anymore, and you'll kind of, you can see that from my wardrobe here. This is my closet. These are all of my clothes. I do have a dresser over there that has like bras, undies, sweats, and things like that. But in terms of my usual day-to-day -day stuff, it's all here. So by no means do I have a walk-in closet, you know, huge, expansive wardrobe, and no shade to anyone who does, but even this is too much for me. <laughs> um, sometimes I, I don't wanna go back to a capsule wardrobe really anytime soon but it was beneficial to me because it just taught me to be more thoughtful with my purchases to be very intentional about like when I'm making a decision in terms of a garment like what is the fit does it actually fit me really really well because a lot of times you know I would find stuff on clearance or whatever at Forever 21 when I was in high school and just buy it because it was eight dollars even if it was too short or whatever I don't do that I don't play that game anymore and as of late especially as well I'm focusing a lot more on fiber content I really try to buy natural fiber not only from a sustainability perspective and avoiding like polyesters because of microplastics and stuff like I do still own stuff that's polyester like a lot of my um, you know fleece 
hoodies and things or blends like that. But if you're wearing cotton or if you're wearing linen, it's just breathable. You don't be stinking in it. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like when I was in high school, I would wear a lot of polyester chiffon and I feel like I stunk, um, <laughs> just being honest. And when you are that zeroed in and thoughtful about stuff, you buy less and because of that i don't feel the need to challenge myself to do a capsule wardrobe anymore but for any of you guys who feel like you fall victim to impulse purchases and things like that i think it's a great experiment to do for i did it for basically a full year so yeah i would urge you to do the same but with that said what else have i been into wearing as of late i just posted a picture to instagram in these pants they're from a brand called dallas dawes she actually used to be local to minneapolis but she moved to la and that's where she has her business out of now she's also an isu alum iowa state university that's where I went. So let me style these a couple of different ways. All right, so we've got the pants on and I've tossed on this shirt. If you're not following me on Instagram, which <laughs> you should be, but I posted a reels on there where I was um, styling this thrifted men's gap linen shirt uh, three different ways, but I mean, something like this is literally so versatile. And the fact that I got for $3 is pretty stellar, especially when you are going to be investing in things like, for instance, a pair of pants like these. They are sustainably made. Yeah, I'll get into budgeting a sustainable wardrobe in a second, but let me start styling this fit. So I'm just gonna cuff these pants a bit to make them look a little bit more casual since this could easily become a very refined look. And this also gives the pants sort of like a cool, artsy like tapered shape it's like sculpture guys um the way i roll my sleeves make sure those buttons on the placket are undone whether it's one or two buttons down there make sure it's open so i fold up once and then i'm kind of just again it's like sculpture i like to leave some of it untucked and i'm pushing up to above the elbow these days but yeah a pair of pants like these are definitely an investment so my entire wardrobe is certainly not all from high not high end but just new oh got a package that scared me <laughs> not all of my stuff is from like new sustainable retail brands i am in a very privileged position you know working at a pretty well-paying job for someone my age, I would say, to be able to invest in some pieces, I would say seasonally. For instance, when COVID started, um, I bought a couple of like sets. Uh, I bought this like Mad Happy sweat suit set, sweatshirt and sweatpants. But yeah, it was like, a hundred something for the sweatshirt and a hundred something for the pants. Cannot be doing that all day, every day. And then even this like tie dye set that I showed on Instagram, um, which is from Comeback as a Flower, which if you can support that brand, they're really, really great. Black owned, Los Angeles based. They manufacture everything out there as well. It was like 90 something for the top and 90 something for the bottom. So, and even buying that stuff like in a set, sometimes you get bundle deals on the websites. It's still expensive. Um, so, you know, if you're not in a position where you can even afford to do that stuff seasonally, do not feel like you have to. Thrift, vintage, I really especially love vintage because it's more of a curated experience. And sometimes you can find prices that are comparable to things like H&M or like American Eagle or Zara or things like that. So instead of shopping at places like that, you could go to a very great local curated curate i like really enunciated that i did not mean to you could go to a great curated vintage shop and spend your coin there instead a lot of my best stuff is vintage and i'll probably try to show some vintage in this video there's also a lot of great instagram vintage brands a lot of times people will ask me like oh like where's your shirt from where's that from and it's like a lot of times it's vintage and even if it's not it's just not always important to have the exact same thing as what i am wearing or what another person on Instagram is wearing. It's really about curating your style and then shopping through that lens. And whether you're shopping at Value Village or you're shopping at Eileen Fisher, like it's still your style and your creative vision that's most important in the matter, not so much the item itself. So this is one way I'll style um, this top sometimes is like a little partial tuck. I wasn't planning on doing it with these pants, but I don't know. I'm gonna slip on these shoes to see like a total look. These shoes are thrifted, 
but I think they're originally from Target, but you can get these little kind of like minimalist black slides at so many different places. And to even be clear too, thrifting is something that requires time and time is also a privilege. So if you're a college student, if you're a working mom, whatever, and you have to shop at like H&M or Target or whatever other <laughs> situation, that's okay too. As long as you are taking care of your clothes, doing those things where you're paying attention to fit, paying attention to fiber content, hanging things to dry when you need to, being more conscientious in your spending habits is still another way of being sustainable because it's very elitist to assume that we all have the time to go thrifting or we all can you know, spend a lot of money at curated vintage shops and uh, these new sort of sustainable brands. Like those are luxuries and privileges as well, depending on your lifestyle. <clears throat> so sustainability looks so different to so many different people. And I don't like to be absolutist in, uh, in the matter. I also love a tote because I'm not really like a handbag or purse gal. Those are just investments that I'm not interested in making. Um, I love totes because I can use them for grocery shopping. I could use them when I was actually going into the office for work. I could put a laptop in here. This one from Bagu has like this little pocket so I can easily access my, you know, if I have another tote bag for shopping also from Bagu. Wallet, like it's just such a great, design i just love the versatility of totes and i feel like when i lived in copenhagen even though ugh, teardrops on my guitar that was like three years ago at this point hate to think about that <laughs> i wish i still lived there but i feel like just so many folks there would just like be so effortless in their style with their low buns and oh you know i've just got my my tote i've got my sneakers i've got my dress i'm on my bike and every day i am trying to channel the mindset that I still live in Copenhagen, so this is what I do. But I was actually thinking I would do a full tuck with this look, so I'm just gonna button this all the way. Sometimes obviously full tucks are tricky in like the bum area, so I try to just pull and smooth it out until it's like right there. It's a little bit more flattering. And instead of having it blue on like equally around, I do a little bit more of a tuck on that placket section. Just creates a nice kind of shape, I feel. So yeah, this is how I was planning on wearing this look. I think it's very, you know, not to gender clothing, but I would say this is very like traditionally menswear-esque. And then you've got obviously this like deep unbuttoning situation and yeah. I'm into it. I also am into just like a simple slim fitting tee. So I'm gonna to toss this guy on. Okay, so I've got this t-shirt on, which is a lovely like vanilla color, which I love. It's like the color of my apartment. So it makes me happy. This is from the brand Cotton, K-O-T-N, which I've been loving recently. I have only ordered this tee from them, but I'm like coveting a lot of items, which speaking of like being smarter in your spending habits, I think I've mentioned before how much I love pin I think I talked about it in my mood board video, but I have a whole secret board on Pinterest, which is my shopping list. And I've got the like Google Chrome widget. So like anytime I'm shopping on Cotton or Mad Happy or whatever else, I can pin that page to that board. I have it broken down into sections. So I've got jewelry I'm coveting, clothing, makeup, skincare, lingerie, everything is on that board home stuff it doesn't matter so then i stare at it for several weeks months years i've had stuff on there for years before i pull the trigger and make the purchase because then i get the experience of feeling like i'm shopping as i'm pinning things and it kind of takes away that craving for instant gratification in making spending habits that you might regret later. But I love this, it's like a fitted tee. It's a little bit more of an approachable, sustainable brand in terms of affordability. It's kind of like an Everlane, but I still feel pretty conflicted about Everlane. So cotton is another great option if you're looking for stuff and your budget is more in the like 30 to $80 range, 30 to $90 range, as opposed to that higher end $100 plus range for other sustainable brands. So yeah, this tee is so great, so versatile. Um, especially when it comes to pairing it with like denim that's maybe a little bit baggier, like a lot of my vintage denim. I kind of want to do a whole video about my vintage denim collection. Actually, I think I want to try on these with this t-shirt. These are Carhartt jeans, relaxed fit. It says these are 30 by 30s. We're just going to do this out of frame. <laughs> 
I love these. I haven't worn them in a bit. I've already got them cuffed, as you can see. Love the little Carhartt patch. Um, I don't know, what shoes would I wear these with? I've also got shoes on the back of my door, which is just out of frame, you can't see. Unfortunately, these are from Everlane, but let's just take a look. If I wanted to make this a little bit more like back in the days when we would just go to like coffee shops and stuff and <laughs> hang out. If I used my little gold tote, another amazing black owned brand, skincare and wellness brand. You know, I'm just like out for a stroll or something like that. Cute. Actually, I feel like it would also be cute. I'm not gonna, well, I guess I could put in these earrings. These are some cute like machete earrings. Love that brand. When I'm going for not just like solid gold, these are a fun option. Ooh. Oh, this takes me back to just like cruising around town and shopping at small businesses on a Saturday. Okay guys, easiest way into tricking people at your fashionable, one piece dressing, <laughs> seriously. The outfit's put together for you. And one piece dressing doesn't always have to be dresses. I like dresses, don't get me wrong, but I think I'm definitely more into like the, I mean, I love denim. I love the kind of workwear aesthetic. So love this as an option. So this is an amazing little boiler suit from Big Bud Press. I got this when I was in Los Angeles. Um, so if you saw that vlog this past February before everything went down. So yeah, this is great. Um, expensive. <laughs> this was expensive. So if you can find something like this vintage, amazing. These are all over these days now, seriously. What you're looking for is a boiler suit is what I would call this. You can also look for flight suits. Jumpsuit is just a little bit too broad of a term. If you're searching on like Depop or something like that, I'm just trying to give you some like keywords to search. Coveralls is another term probably. I know coveralls and overalls, I get those kind of mixed up. So boiler suit is the term I would use. But I love that these are brown. Brown is like a cool neutral shade that people like forget about a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just really admiring this boiler suit. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun. I, you know, hope I answered some of your guys' questions as it relates to finding my style, building a sustainable wardrobe. Let me know if you guys wanna see another video like this, which would be like a fall winter video. And I can do them midway through the seasons too. So, I mean, I could do more a year. It's like totally up to you guys. But anyway, thank you all so, so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.